What's going on guys? This is Nate from the Scrub Academy welcoming you to another episode of our Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel Solo Mode series. If you did not see our latest episode, make sure to check up in the cards. There's going to be a link up there for you to take you back to the previous episodes. You can watch that before you watch this one. If you have not seen any of our previous episodes of our Master Duel Solo Mode series, there's going to be a link to our playlist down below in the description so you can check out all of the videos in order. That way you can see us grow from novice to, well we're still a novice, but we're a growing novice. Let's go ahead, we're going to jump into our solo mode real quick for you. We're going to see exactly what we're jumping into today. In our previous episode, we did go ahead and take on the Gears of Justice. We did clear it, although we don't have enough of the Earth Orbs to actually go through and complete the entire thing. That'll be later on. Hopefully, either the cyberspace or the digital bugs of cyberspace or the steam di uh, dinosaurs of the Dynamis are going to be giving us those Earth Orbs so we can go ahead and actually complete out the Gears of Justice. So let's go ahead. Today, we're going to be jumping into the digital bugs of cyberspace. The digital bugs transform themselves into more powerful Xyz monsters using special Xyz, uh, special Xyz summons. Watch out for the evolution of these unstoppable bugs. Now, I used to love bugs when I was a kid. Um, I played with all the roly polies out there in the world. <laughs> As I grew older, now I hate bugs, I hate spiders. Uh, I don't have any room for them in my house. So let's go ahead, we're gonna jump into the scenario today. And we're gonna be earning uh, three howling insects before going through the scenario. Alrighty, so we have the digital bugs of cyberspace. The rapid progress of cyber networks has brought great benefits to humanity. They are now an integral part of our lives. However, that rapid progress and change left several minor bugs in the corners of the network. Initially, they were just meaningless data with little impact. However, the bugs accumulated data previously learned over time. And by the time we've noticed, they've taken on the appearance of insects literally bugs in the system. Experts theorize that their primary objectives were pro uh, proliferation and evolution. Despite their differing qualities, the peculiar thing is that they act as if they were one species with a singular purpose. All the different types of bugs. We got bees, ants, ladybugs. In our world we observe a symbiotic relationship between ants and aphids, aphids and uh, in which ants drive away ladybugs, an aphids' natural enemy, to obtain nectar from the, ap from the aphids. However, ants and aphids are a different species whose objectives don't align. Might it be that the bugs were born of a singular datum, and only because their appearance differ are they assumed to be different species? It will take some time to get to the bottom of this. In any case, we can't overlook the bugs spreading throughout the network. Network administrators have come to defer to these defects to these defects who've achieved rapid growth and evolution as digital bugs. Henceforth, they've taken action to exterminate these... I didn't see lots of bugs, I'm guessing. Alright, and there is our scenario. And we got three howling insects for it. Now we do have... Let's see what we need to unlock this one today. The light warp, so we can actually do that one if we wanted to. Alright, let's go ahead and jump into our practice and learn all about the light... Ooh, we're getting light orbs here too. Alright, well, light orbs to unlock it if we needed to. So let's go ahead, we'll jump into our practice and learn about the digital bugs and learn how to exceed someone with them and all the different effects. Alrighty, so what makes a digital bug deck unique? By, XY, by XC summoning insect type Xyz monsters with digital bug monsters as a material, you can grant them a range of effects. This deck also allows you to change levels and further stack materials to keep XC summoning to bring out more powerful monsters, including rank 3, 5, and 7 Xyz monsters. Interesting, so you can just keep ranking them up. Alrighty. Set one, and go. Seems like the story of my life when it comes to actual and rally feeling. So yeah, I got Digital Bug Web Soldier. All right. Let's learn about it. Try summoning the Digital Web with web, uh, Digital Bug Web Soldier. They're right in that spot right there. Activate Digital Bug Web Soldier's effect to get ready to exceed summon. What is his effect? We cannot be used for Xyz material for Xyz summon except for the Xyz summon of an insect type monster. Once per turn, you can target one face up attack target monster you control, change it to defense position, and if you do special summon a level 3 insect type monster from your hand. So change him to defense, special summon him. Alright, and we'll special summon the Centibit. I've never actually played with this deck, so we'll see how this goes once we get to the actual dueling portion of it. Alright, so we're going to be going into the Scarab Dia. Interesting. Mm, attack position here. What does he do though? That's my next question. Alright, attack your points, life points directly. 
All right, I'll listen to you. Activate the effect of bug signal and attack directly with your special summon XE's monster. Target one XE's monster, uh, insect XE's monster control. Special from your extra deck one XE's. Uh, okay, so you're gonna rank pretty much rank up. Okay. And we're gonna be going into the core page. Alright, so you just rank up all the time. Okay, I get it. No, he's a little butterfly now. And then we can just go ahead and attack for game. And we got 150 light overs for that. Alright, now we're going to be taking on the actual deck. So insect, insect type Xyz monsters who are summoned with the digital bug monsters as Xyz materials in a range of formidable effects. Don't let your guard down even when you have a strong monster on your field. Digital bug web soldier and, and bocce bocce bocce, great name there. Uh, can deal lots of damage together, so protect yourself from your opponent's attacks with cards like Butter Spy Protection and Stumbling. Ooh, so we get to play with the butterflies? Or butterflies, I should say. Maxi! We actually get hand traps, that's crazy. Alright, so we can just go ahead and go straight into this. And then activate his effect, changing him to defense. We're not going to chain our own. That's going to be problematic. I saw a video about that, how people were asking, like, it was asking if you wanted to activate things, no matter what, when you're in rank. So when we get into actual rank, we are going to be changing our um, settings in the Master Duel. That way you have to hold buttons to activate things or chain things, uh, or respond to them. Uh, we'll have to remember that later on so we don't screw that up. But it allows us to not give our opponent um, just the general knowledge that we do have things that can go ahead and chain to it. But that wouldn't really work out too, us, too well for us. Letting them know that we have hand traps in our hand or anything like that. Alright, so we can go into a couple things here. The Cicada King. So he, if his battle is change, uh, battle position is changed, you can special summon one exit insect from your graveyard. We have the same one that we just had, the Scarator. You can detach to the target uh, opponent, uh, target opponent controls, change his battle position. If you do, it's affection negated. Um, that isn't a quick effect though, unfortunately. And then we just have the Giga Brilliant. So you can detach one, I'll place a monster control, gain 300. So he has the biggest defense since we are going first. Let's go ahead and go into him. Uh, it just allows us to kind of set up a little bit. And then the Butter Spy, we can target one face. That's not what I should have done then. Oh well, whatever. Uh... We're not going to change anything to that. Um, we'll just go ahead and end our turn here, I guess, since we don't have anything in attack position. Hopefully our Maxi can get us some draws or something. Uh, we will see. Foolish Burial. Dropping the Centibit. What is his effect going to be doing? Da -da 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 -da. Once turn is third. So from there we can actually chain the Maxi. It's crazy how with, there's Maxi and Google in this. And we actually get hand traps and Regeki in our opening hand. That's pretty crazy. Let's draw one there. Draw a second one. No wonder they gave us. No wonder they gave us the Maxi because he knew, they knew that we were going to be doing this or dealing with this. Okay, two. Okay. Alright, we'll draw a turn here. Stumbling. So any monster that has normal summon, club summon, or special summon is changed to defense. Um, let's see here, well first off we do need to clear out his board, so we can banish extra deck monsters to draw. So we'll go do that first, we're going to draw two, just to see what we get. Um, ooh, and we can choose which ones are banished too, which is nice for us. Um, let's do ones that we have like doubles of, that way we don't screw ourselves up later. Oh, we gotta do six. Shoot, I forgot about that. Ooh. 
Uh, Giga Brilliant doesn't think I- I thought I'm gonna go into that. I don't think I'm gonna go into that. Um, Exabeetle. Six is a lot, I forgot. Ooh. Alright, let's see what we got here. We can't clear out this entire field though with that if we wanted to. So, normal summon, you can control, you can special one lower galaxy effect monster from your deck, but its effects are negated. Once per turn, attack position, you can target one in your graveyard, change this to events to special summon it. What do we have in our graveyard? Anything? Okay, we do have things in our graveyard. Go ahead and add that. We don't really need the heavy, heavy, uh, heavy spell dust right now. And like that, yeah. Seems good to me. So this is where we can normal summon this one. Do that. Target either one of these. Doesn't really matter which one, actually. What is he doing? Hold up. Always getting materials. Um, so only during his turn can you detach one, so that's okay. So once return, if the bat position of a monster on the field is changed, you can attach one. Well, nothing was changed. Oh, his was changed. Okay. And that's only once return as well. So now we just need to make sure that we get rid of this guy. Alright. Let's go ahead and go into that. Maybe there was a reason we kept him around. Okay, so hits the back. Let's take a look here. So once per turn, during either player's turn, you can detach two target a monster, change its battle position. If you do have its effect, uh, it it has its effects negated to the end of the turn. That allows us to be able to not attack over again. So you destroy this monster and you have to get attached to that monster to this card as exceeds material. Okay. So let's go now and go into battle phase. Attack over this. And that means that his effect would activate attaching it. Yes. And then we can activate bug signal. Okay. And then we'll seize over the top into one of these. We've got excess stags. We can target one monster point controls. And in, uh, in the graveyard equipment to this card, it gains attack and defense. And then you can also go into this one. Core badge. Let's go into core badge. And then we still have our stumbling we can activate too after this too, which is nice. Okay, let's go ahead and battle here. Attack for 11. We'll go main phase two. Um, so let's see here. Once per turn, you can detach one XCs. Target one defense with this one hundred corner controls. Shuffle it into the deck. I don't know if that is a quick effect though. I don't think it is. But we can go ahead and we can activate stumbling now. So anything a special summon, normal summon, flip summon goes into defense. And then we can set our butterflies. Card right there, and we should be good to go. MST. Okay, well, I didn't want that anyway. Didn't want it anyway. Alright, let's see what he can do here. Stumbling's gonna change his defense right away. Uh, what is he doing here? Da da da, what's your turn? If a bad position monster in the field is changed, you can detach one. Or you can attach one inside monster from the graveyard to this card as material. Uh, we'll wait on that just because he's gonna be doing it again anyway. I'm guessing. But yeah, because he's going to be such a sunny anyway. Into his own Scarator. Dude. His effects are going to be negated though, right? I guess we can try it and see what happens. I don't think it'll work though, because it's going to be negated. Okay, so we can negate it. Okay, end phase. Alright, cool. That's fine by me. Alright, so we got a cent a bit. Two cent a bits here. So this one is gonna be. If this face up attack card is changed from attack to defense, you can special someone level 3 from your deck. Alright, that's fine. Um, we will. Let's get rid of this guy first, honestly. I don't like him. We'll just go ahead and attack over him. And then we can go main phase 2. Um, now that he doesn't have any effect or anything that gain from anything. We'll go this card. 
then his is gonna be the attaching. So we can do that too, that doesn't matter to me. Resolve. Um, we can attach either of these actually, and he's gonna be special slinging from the deck, right? Yes. Or this guy. Yes. Okay. So let's attach that to it. And then we can special summon any of the. I don't think it really matters which one, but let's go ahead and just grab one. He's already in defense, so that's okay. And then we can just go into the king. And we'll want to go on defense for this guy. Alright. And then we'll end our turn there. Get the Regeki for backup, and we can't always go over the top with one of our big boys. Okay. Let's go ahead. We can go over the top of our core badge. Ooh, there's like two to detach. Um, that's fine. <clears throat> Unfortunately, he is going to be going to defense though because of the stumbling. Kind of sucks there. Um, he can go into attack position, but we don't really want that. Yeesh. Let's just go ahead. We'll end our turn there. We'll wait to see what he does during his turn. I forgot that he goes to defense because of assembling as well. Thanks, dude. Assembling will make him go to defense. Ooh, he has an effect. Destroy the face of monster control the highest defense. We'll wait on that. Um, he'll probably exceed summon, I'm guessing, and he has to go straight to the end phase. Okay. We'll go back, uh, draw phase here, draw into a foolish barrier. Alright, so let's go ahead. We can go into a attack position here. Um. Do I want to save the Regeki? I feel like I do. We can just detach one here. We'll detach this. And we'll destroy the one with the highest defense on their field. Uh, we'll keep that in defense for now. Let's go straight into battle phase. We can do piercing, which is nice. So I don't need to worry about that. We'll go down to 56 for him. Would've been nice to have an attack position now, but it's fine. We'll go from there. I feel like this is going to be another... Well, it could be interesting because they're going to be changing when we go to our actual main deck with the Monarchs. Uh, he could actually go ahead... Um, could mess with us a little bit just because all of our Monarchs are at 1,000 defense. And if he changes about position, he could probably attack over it. We will need to lock him out of his extra deck. Alright. Let's go ahead and take a look here. Letty Bug. I think with this we got 26, 12, these guys are all going to go to defense unfortunately. Let's go ahead, we'll change this to attack position. Let's see here. Gain 500, we'll change this battle position. Um, we can actually make this guy change his battle, oh, let's push 7 1 here. But end up being a defense position because of stumbling. Um, I guess we'll have to change this one. I didn't mean to do that, but we'll go with it. Alright. From the hand of special summon, we can go into uh, anything really. And then we can just go ahead and enter battle phase. And attack him. We're gonna do 2600 to this big boy right here. He is pretty small, but with our big boy, I should say. We'll go ahead and end there. Next turn, we should be able to push for game because of our Regeki, as long as he doesn't have anything done. But along with this, we should be good. Is that once per turn during play? Sure, we can do this. I think it is, which is kind of dumb. So we can literally just lock him out of being able to summon. Which I think is pretty crazy, pretty unfair, but you have to see. Oh, by the way, I did go ahead and change my name down here. Uh, I was using my Steam, the usual Steam name. But I changed to Scrub Academy just so you guys can find me. Um, I will be posting on the YouTubes uh, my profile so you guys can add me. So once I start doing ranked, we can do some kind of cool fan duels as well.
That should be pretty fun. We can do some live streams. I've never actually live streamed on this channel before, uh, but we can do live streams now. So that would be pretty fun. Okay. So I think here we should be able to push for game. Let's go ahead. We'll drop a turn, and then we'll go straight up for Geki. If you summon something out, that's fine. We can just attack into it. Defense, lower defense, and go for game. See, right there what he was thinking, he was thinking about whether or not he wanted to activate something. So, that kind of gives it away whether or not he wants to do anything. Let's go ahead, we'll change to attack position here. And that'll be game if he doesn't do anything. Uh, we'll go ahead and we'll attack with our... Okay, so he's going to be targeting two in defense position, but they're trying to turn to do it. Okay, so we can't attack over that with him. Neither one can be attacked with him, unfortunately. Um, so we can not do anything with that, actually. We can just attack with him now. Kinda sucks, but that's okay. Uh, we will do some damage to him, so that's okay. I had a feeling something was gonna happen. Oh, now we can't do him. Darn it. Okay, well, we'll go ahead and end our turn. We could have attacked over that if we had saved him. We should have attacked with our big guy first, thinking that something was gonna happen. But, you live and you learn. Uh, not much you can do with that. He's just gonna straight switch into attack position here and attack into our stuff. Um, nothing I can do about that. Kinda sucks. Nothing I can do about that. Alright, well. The question is... Oh, we can activate his effect though and pop the highest attack, so that can clear something out. Turn change into ours. So it comes down to... So that will help us next turn. What do you think he has right there? That's the question. Because if we go into battle phase now and attack into this, that could win us the game, depending on what he has in defense. Or what he has for defense. 1200. So it doesn't actually go for game. But we will be able to go... That's not very nice. Go for game next turn. We should be able to. We'll go ahead and set that, and we'll be good to go. That will do some damage for us. That can also do damage for us. And we'll go from there. Get a good brilliant. 1800? 1800. Into what? Corbage? Corbage? Um. Shuffle it into the deck, that's fine, I don't really need it anyway. We can't activate either of these though, honestly. We'll probably just do him. Detach one of these. Bug signal. We'll wait on that to resolve. Just into 18. Oh, that actually still worked for it. I'm not sure how that... Oh, I guess it... So his effect destroys that one with the highest defense, and since that one came on the field, they did have the highest defense, so that worked out for us. Alright, cool. So we just can go ahead in the battle phase and attack for game. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. We're learning the deck. The, the digital buck deck. Kind of interesting. It'll be fun to see what happens when we get to the bigger duels once we unlock everything. Just because... Ooh, level up. Level 9. Um, <laughs> when that happens... I feel like we're gonna get owned a couple times with these as we're learning things. And we got three bug matrix there. All right, let's go ahead. We'll jump into our next duel. This is gonna be using our deck. We're gonna see how we can handle the digital bugs, uh, whether or not they're gonna be messing with us with the changing of uh, offense to defense when we have low defense on our monster on our monarchs. But we will have to see. We can just stop him right away though with this. Oh, can he? Tar he, he can't target. Give me a strip of card effects. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead. We can special summon this. I'll put him in defense right here. And we'll give him a token. We can activate our domain. Activate our march. Activate our domain for our Thestalos. Then Thestalos can be normal summoned. Right here. And we can dump one out of his hand. Do some damage there. Uh, we don't need to activate that. What do we have in our hand here? If he's destroyed the valley, he gets to do stuff, but we don't need to worry about that. We'll just go ahead and do this one. 
All right, and that's all we can do, but we have locked him out of his extra deck now, which is nice. And then he can't destroy the card effects. So, as long as he doesn't have anything dumb, we can do stuff here. So if he's destroyed, he can add one. Okay, so we have to worry about- we, have, we, ha we will have to worry about that one when the time comes. Um, we don't want to act- oh man. I want to battle first, to be honest. Let's just battle first. Get him out of the way. He'll be able to add one. Which sucks for us. Okay. So with that... Da -da 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 -da. I feel like with that, I want to go ahead... I can summon this, right? So I'll summon him over the top of this. Stum um, stumbling is going to mess with it, unfortunately, but we are going to get effect to shuffle one of these cards back, which can help us a lot. Uh, so we'll chain our Erebus here. So that's going to dumb Prime and Pantheism. That will help us for next turn. And we'll shuffle one of these cards back into this hand. Hopefully it's the monster he just added. Uh, so we are going to be in defense position now, unfortunately, but that is kind of the price you have to pay. We ha we are still having him locked out of his extra deck, and he only has one monster that has zero attack. So he can't actually attack over us. So depending on what he drew here, we're good. Okay. So now is when it's going to come down to actually being able to draw things that we need. Uh, so let's go ahead, we can activate our Pantheism here. Pantheism is going to allow us to add one. Um, we can't use our tenacity, unfortunately, um, but we can do like erupt, and that could lock him out of things as well. And then we shouldn't even need to worry about anything at all. Um, what could be the most unfortunate for him? I guess a tenacity. Then we can add it next turn if we need to, or a storm forth could affect him a lot too. Let's just go with a tenacity for now, and we'll see what he adds. We'll see if he's a smart AI or he's a stupid AI. Survey says. Dumb AI, alright. We'll go ahead and we'll set that. We'll switch to attack position. And we are just going to attack. He can add all he wants. Um, it doesn't really affect us at all. Because he can't do anything with the defense. And now he's going to have monster effects to get it as well. Uh, so we just have to wait until we can actually... You know, get some... Get some more monarchs to summon. So we're going to need to add... Um, a return at some point. It's going to be interesting what they do with the ban list on here and whether or not they're going to change it now that the new TCG ban list is out. We'll have to see how that goes. Drop a turn here. Regeki. Ooh, that could be really beneficial to us right now. Just clearing out all of his monsters. And he doesn't get an add off that either. Oh my gosh. That's busted. If he had gotten to add off these two, I would have been I wouldn't have been upset just because he can't really do much with them. But the fact that he can't add off them because they want to disrupt a battle. Or by card effect. Oh, they have to be face up too, so we'll flip something. Okay, so that really helped us out a lot. We do need to get into another monster though, unfortunately. Give me like a uh, give me a Mobius actually. Domain is not what we need. Uh, but we can't we can't just discard it off of our pantheism and hopefully draw into what we need. Give me a mono. Neither of those are monos. We, we did draw into an infinite permanent though, which is something that we ended up uh, creating for the deck, which is pretty nice. Let's we'll go ahead and battle phase here. Attack into the uh, set down card, the face down card. We get to add off of his Jordan Sanctuary, which is fine. We just need to get into another monster, honestly. Give me any type of monarch, and we're good to go. MST. Oh man, what is this one again? The infinite impermanence? That's fine. We don't need to do anything, I guess. We don't really need it anyway because of our, our storm port. I'm glad he didn't hit this though. That could have helped him a lot. And that just could have hurt him a lot too. Um, we'll enter. Go ahead and jump into our turn here. Give me a monarch. Ah, that's not a monarch. I need a monarch. I really, really need a monarch here. Or he could go to the grave too, I guess, and we could discard one to be able to do something. If Panthe is in the grave, that doesn't do anything for us though, because we do need to be able to add, unfortunately. 
we'll just have to keep attacking until we draw into something. Somewhere along the line, we'll be able to we'll be able to do something here. Someday, hopefully. Now what does Howling Insect do? Oh, especially level one. Um, we'll end our turn there. As long as he can't carry him or switch him into defense, which I don't think he should because he, he would probably need an uh, Xyz monster to do it, which we blocked him out of, we should be okay for now. We do need a Monarch. Really bad. Really bad. Stormforth. We have all these cards that we literally can do, use right now, which sucks for us. Uh, this is the epitome of <laughs> being bricked up. We've got lots of cards that we could use if we, could, if we had access to them, but we are just bricked right now. And he's just getting lots of card advantage, unfortunately. Um, luckily for us, he can't really use them, so that's okay. We just have to deal with not opening any. Is there a second one of those? First one of those, I believe, though. I think we have one more of those. Or no, we have one more of those in the, or in the deck. Two more of those, one more of those, and then Monarchs. And I feel like this is just going to be a very long defensive battle of us just going back and forth until I can actually draw into some things that can affect him. Oh man, that's not what I wanted at all. It's great later on, if we can actually get some Monarchs going. If I can just draw into a Monarch so I can grab a return, I think we're golden at that point. Like, he won't be able to keep up with the advantage. Well, we are going to be not doing anything with that. Give me a Monarch. All these cards in our hand, we're going to start discarding things. Go to the battle phase, jump right into it, and attack into it. Unfortunately. All the things that I could do if I wanted, but I just need to get to a monarch to be able to actually do it. Okay. So this next turn, I need a monarch. I really, really need a monarch. Or else we're going to the point where we're going to be sort of discarding things. Or setting things that we don't need to discard. Or discard. So he has things here that he could probably activate, I'm guessing. Which sucks. But what can you do? Water? No, okay. Okay, but we can get some drop power here. We can get some drop power. How many cards? 21 cards in our deck. Uh, we're just gonna get rid of our escalation because I don't even want it in my hand anymore. I just need to get two. Give me two of Monarch. Thank you. Okay, so now we can actually do things. Uh, we can activate a Pantheism in the Grave. We'll just banish that one. Uh, we are going to add a return, return, and tenacity. Alright, we'll activate the return. We can then normal summon. Effects aren't negated yet, so that's okay with us. Uh, we are going to change his effect. It's okay if he's in defense, though. That's actually better for us anyway, I don't want him being in attack. Get this into the grave. It's okay. We'll get the initial normal summon. Stumbling. It's fine. Um, but from there, we can activate the Mobius. Or summon the Mobius. Over the top of these two. We got lots of effects here happening, so Stumbling's gonna activate. Ideas effect is gonna activate. Turn's gonna activate. And activate. We'll add off of the return. We're going to pop with the Mobius. We'll destroy this one. Yes. And this one. Oh, we can destroy three. Uh, he can add all day long. I don't care about that. And then Idea can add. Lots of effects. It could be, well, I don't think it's one of our first changing fours, but it can change anything. It could be our first changing five. I don't think we've gone past that yet. There's Shane Link 5, targeting Tutor to the uh, special. And I think we could do more if we wanted to. Do we want to though? That's a question. No. We could go. We could have gone to 6 if we wanted to, but we're not going to. That's getting there too crazy. Idea will add, the Pantheus is back. Mobius. Um, and that will add the Ryza to our hand. Or actually, let's add this to our hand. We'll add the Aether. 
and then stumbling. Can he not be targeted either? Because that didn't... Oh, that was adding. Okay. So stumbling is gone now. Okay, that's why. Alright, we'll go battle phase here since we can't summon again. And we'll just attack into and clear out some of these. That's fine. Six cards in hand now. Is that once per turn? I can't remember. We're gonna find out. It is not once per turn? He's gonna be adding all of them. But the problem is he's locked out now of his extra deck. He can't do anything except for set them pretty much. And now that we actually have Return on the field and we have Monarchs in our hand, we're just going to be able to keep on going and pushing through all of this stuff. And he shouldn't be able to do anything at all. Oh, he had another stumbling. I guess it's understandable. Only there was a way I could get him back. I guess I could rise at him and return him back to the deck if I wanted to. Um, let's just go ahead, we'll activate our Eidos and Grave. Banish your special summon the idea. Someone will make him go into defense, but he's already there, so that's okay. Idea, luckily someone doesn't negate effects. Now, if there was a card on the field that said all defensive position monsters have their effects negated, that would suck for us right now, but that's okay. Alright, we'll go Eidos right there. We will... Mm, we won't change anything for right now. We're just going to get our additional summon. And when it comes down to it, I want to do a Aether. Pivoting these two. Oh man, I, I, oh, well, I guess we didn't really screw up that bad. We'll actually end up getting it still, later on. Um, we'll go one to add. Two to special. We'll have to dump a Pantheism, I believe. And then we'll add back with the idea, adding the Pantheism back that's already been. I can't remember if we actually have a Pantheism in the deck to dump. If not, we'll have to figure out something else to dump, but it's okay. We don't have Pantheism, we just start Pantheism. Alright, so we have... we do not have one, but we have an Erupt that we can send, and we now have a Dead Return that we can send. We're getting low into our deck here. Um, Kuraz, get attack position here, Return's gonna add, so we'll add the Ryza. Somebody's gonna change him to defense, and he missed activation because of that, I'm guessing. Mm, no. Um, from there, we can actually go ahead and we can activate our Swarm Fork because we have an additional summon now, which is nice for us. And then we can activate the Domain for the Ryza. We'll chain the Prime. Um, actually, I don't want to chain the Prime. Can I not chain the Prime? I screwed up there. Oh, um, we will chain... We'll banish this, that's fine. That's fine, we won't chain anything to it. Prime will come out in defense. And then we will change his level. Actually, we should change his level because we wanted to summon him later. Um, we'll actually just summon him because we want to tribute one of his monsters. And then we'll tribute our prime. I screwed up the level change there, but it's okay. We will not activate his effect. But now we got rid of one of his monsters, which is good for us. And then we can just go ahead and attack through these. And next turn we should be able to go right in for game. Because we have so much, uh, so many monsters on our field that we should be good to go. And he can't destroy them. This actually been pretty low too though, right? Attack into that one. Yeah, if anything, we could just win by deck out if we really wanted to, if we wanted to be that kind of guy. Uh, which we don't. We, def we definitely never want to actually play for a deck out, or for time, because that's stupid. Uh, discarding one card from our hand kind of sucks. Let's just get rid of this. We don't really need it anymore because we have all these monsters on our field. That's okay. Alright, 
do activating matrix. Doesn't really do much for him, but I guess it gives him a little bit of a boost. Alright. We will be able to attack for game, that's for sure. Uh, just depends on how we want to do it. Let's go ahead, we'll activate the Prime in our graveyard. Prime can banish literally anything in the grave, doesn't matter anymore for us. Uh, we'll banish the return that's in the grave to bring it out. And then we can activate this. Lowering Ryza's level. Now we can normal summon our Ryza. We're distributing the Streets of Prime. And then this can actually send this back. Either one of these. Let's just go ahead and return this. And then select a target to return in our graveyard. We'll just return and interrupt that we dump. Someone will change him, unfortunately, but that's okay. Um, ooh. How many monsters do we have left in the deck? That's the question that I need to ask. Um, let's find out. Okay, there would have to be at least one. Um, all these are in the deck, actually. Let's just grab an Aether. I'm gonna change him. This will shuffle him. All right. So now we should just be able to attack, change all these to attack position, and attack in for game. Unless he has something stupid right here, uh, right here, face down. But we should just be able to attack straight in for game because he can search all day long. That's fine, but he can't do anything with it. So unless he has something here, we should have game right here. Do we got game? Do we got game? Get rid of that. Alrighty, cool. So we did end up actually going in for games, so that's cool. Got rid of that. Alrighty. That has been a bit of a longer video, actually. So that's good for us. We do have enough of the light to actually unlock all these, but we're going to go ahead and do that next time. So let's go ahead and we'll jump into our scenario real quick, and that's the way that we will end the video. We've got a structure deck for the digital bugs. Alright, let's go ahead and see what it says. The digital bugs are pests that devour the cyber networks. The network administrators concluded and implemented a large-scale removal plan. The removal plan, which mainly involved network engineers, was successful and they eradicated the digital bugs. That's sad. The defects were fixed and peace was restored. However, that peace was short-lived. The cyber networks became more vulnerable than before, uh, than before the offensive was launched. Some digital bugs appear to have survived the attempts at eradication. The engineers who suspected this conducted a thorough scan. Naturally, they found no digital bugs, however, waves of interference swelled globally. What could be the cause of these problems? What changed so much before and after the interference? The answer was clear. It was the ex existence of the digital bug. After some deep deliberation, the engineers decided to release the stored digital bug data back into the network. This decision immediately shed light on the perplexing obstacle. There was only one explanation. The digital bugs repaired fatal errors and helped stabilize the network. It was almost as if there was a symbiotic relationship between humans and the digital bugs. By providing a place for, for bees to live, humans can get their honey. Similarly, by providing a cyber network for digital bugs, the defects were extinguished. Since then, those, uh, those that caused noticeable disturbances were removed, but thoroughly, uh, thorough removal was avoided. Humans have decided to coexist with the digital bugs. Interesting. Alright, and so we've got our scenario, our end scenario for the digital, digital bugs. And our gate is official, officially clear, although it is not complete yet. And we did get insect metamorphosis, so I'm guessing that's going to have um, lots of lots of insectors I'm guessing in there, as well as digital bugs and other insect decks. We will not, we will decline to go to that. So we can go ahead and unlock this, but we are going to be going ahead and doing that next time. We're going to end our video right here, guys. Um, we have not got our earth orbs yet just to get into the last gate just yet so we might have to do that later um so i'm guessing next video we are just going to go ahead and we're going to play out these last four duels and complete out the digital bugs of cyberspace so that is all i've got for now guys thank you so much for watching if you did enjoy make sure you hit that uh, like button as well as hitting that subscribe button because all your support is greatly appreciated but that's all i've got for now guys thank you so much for watching as always this is nate from the script academy signing up for now peace out